Flappy Bird, one of the most infamous games of all time. But let's be honest, it kind of sucks. So I think it's probably about time that Flappy Bird gets a sequel, Flappy Bird 2. But why stop at 2? You know, if 2's good, 4's better. So ladies and gentlemen, today I present to you my quest to create Flappy Bird 10. Thousand! So I came up with this idea to create Flappy Bird using 10,000 birds. Not only is this going to be an interesting technical challenge where I need to figure out, you know, how do I get 10,000 birds actually into a game, potentially all interacting with each other and in the world, but it's also going to be a really interesting design challenge to figure out, you know, how do I actually make Flappy Bird interesting with 10,000 birds? You know, how do I make it so the gameplay isn't boring, but it's actually provides something interesting that you couldn't actually do without having 10,000 birds in the game. So that is the challenge. Without giving away too much, I'm really pleased with the results that I came up with. So let's get into how I actually created it. Now, before starting any game project, you need to go out and gather some reference material and kind of figure out what's already out there, especially if you're making a sequel to to an existing game, you probably should go out and find the existing game and play it, you know, figure out what's great about it, what needs improvement and all that. Unfortunately for my case, Flappy Bird got removed from the App Store a number of years ago, so I literally have no way of playing the original Flappy Bird, which puts me in a really unfortunate spot because I can't actually go out and get any source material for this. Luckily enough, by the skin of my teeth, I was able to track down a barcade that had a maybe, maybe not officially licensed version of Flappy Bird available to play. So lucky enough for me, I was able to, you know, play a little bit of Flappy Birds to figure out, you know, kind of what the game is all about and everything. All right, I know I'm kind of playing it up a little bit here, but there's a reason that I bring this up and it all ties back at the end of this video and it's actually kind of hilarious how it all fits together. So now it's time to actually start prototyping some things out. So kind of my initial prototype was to take something that looks more or less like the existing Flappy Bird, but instead of just having one bird spawn into the world, you know, after a short duration of time, we'd spawn another bird into a world world and then another and another and another until we get to, you know, 10,000. So basically, you know, we're spawning these birds in the world kind of sequentially. And then every time you hit the space bar or, you know, tap the phone screen or whatever, then basically all the birds who are in the world, they're all going to jump at the same time and the same you know rate and all that. So I kind of started prototyping this out here and here are kind of some of my initial attempts at figuring this out. You see that I run into a problem very quickly and that's, you know, all the birds are kind of spawning at their own, you know, different times. And, you know, really if I'm looking at that bird in the front and I'm kind of like having that maneuver through all the uh, different pipes and obstacles. Well, basically all the previous birds, they're just gonna kind of end up running into those pipes because how the pipes spawn into the world are all kind of random. They don't follow like, you know, the exact same kind of pattern. So really you end up only being able to control like one bird at a time. And even if I were to make the pipes, you know, kind of follow some pattern, I don't think that the gameplay would be that much more interesting than the existing Flappy Bird. So I scrapped that one pretty quickly, but I kind of built off that initial concept and figured, you know, instead of when I hit the space bar, everyone jumps at the same time, what if I hit the space bar and only the basically leader bird in the front jumps, and then every time the follower birds get to that point where that leader bird was when it jumped, then it's actually gonna go ahead and jump as well. So it kind of all follows this same sort of path. So as I was prototyping this out, you'll see that the leader bird is kind of highlighted in red. And every time I press the space key, it kind of drops this little marker under there. And that's basically what I'm saying, you know, that's where the leader bird jumped. And then of course we can just get real crazy with it and just absolutely yank these things into the stratosphere. Now, if this isn't exactly what you had in mind when I said making Flappy Bird with 10,000 birds, don't worry, I absolutely made that version and you'll see it at the end and it is awesome. But for now, let me continue building upon this idea. Now there is a little bit of a problem with this approach because if you say mess up and then you know your leader bird runs into a pipe, well, all the other follower birds, they're gonna run into the same pipe as well. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. I mapped it so you press the backspace key to essentially delete the most recently placed down marker and then it wipes out all the birds between you know that marker and the previous good marker now. And then it's gonna go ahead and assign a new leader bird and now you kind of have a second shot at getting that correct arc so you can actually make it through those pipes. Now this ended up being really cool because it kind of turns Flappy Bird into a little bit of a puzzle game where you, where you end up in these interesting situations where you're 
kind of you know going back and forth trying to get that right arc to get right through those pipes so basically the way that i have this game mode set up in the end is you have three options to select if you want 100 birds a thousand birds or ten thousand birds and it's basically just going to continue spawning birds until that limit is reached now of course the more birds that you play with the longer this game gets I've only played the game with 10,000 birds one time and it took me like literally 30 minutes to play through the entire game. So if you do end up choosing that mode and playing it, buckle up because you're gonna be in for a little while. Now the scoring works in kind of an interesting way. Basically, every time a bird crosses a pipe, it's gonna add one to your score. So you know, if you know have like a thousand birds in play, you know, you can be racking up points really, really quickly. Another thing that I figured out kind of early on as I was building out this scoring system is the UI was just like really confusing. You know, we just have a bunch of numbers moving really fast. So I came up with this interesting idea where we kind of have progress bars to give you a little bit of information about, you know, how many birds are left still to spawn until you reach your limit. And then also have a status bar that displays, you know, how many birds are in the game. So that one's actually gonna start building up at first as more and more get spawned into the world. But then as you start to lose more and more birds, you know, that progress bar goes down and down and down until it reaches zero and that's game over. Now anyways, well this version of the game is really fun and awesome and I really enjoy it. You know, we're not really pushing anything to the limits of Unity's data or into technology stack. You know, of course, if you're familiar with this channel, a lot of things I do is related to Unity's data oriented technology stack and their entity component system. You know, check out some of the videos on my channel to learn a little bit more about that. But I'm building this entire game using Unity's dots and ECS, and I'm not really pushing the performance that hard in this existing mode. And in fact, there's probably a bunch of ways that you could fake this type of game mode and existing mono behavior project, no problem. So I kind of want to focus on the technical problems a little bit more. You know, how do I actually get 10,000 birds to be shown on screen at one time and make it an actually kind of interesting game that's, you know, something more interesting than just a regular Flappy Bird. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of videos during the development of this project. I kind of was just marathoning through it and, you know, breaking things left and right. So anyways, with this version, instead of starting at one bird and spawning all the way up to 10,000, I'm actually wanting to spawn at 10,000 birds to begin with, and then we basically work our way down to zero. Once you're at zero, then that's game over. So I kind of started off just by basically spawning all these birds into a formation, and then when the game plays, you know, basically you hit the space bar and they all move up and they all kind of move down together. Now, to be honest, this isn't really that much more interesting than a regular ver version of Flappy Birds, but you know, maybe think of whether you kind of have like a ball and then you know, as you're hitting pipes, it's kind of slowly chipping away at that until you're left with nothing. So it is, you know, there is there is a little bit of something there, but again, not really that interesting in my opinion. And plus the birds are all kind of static in place and it doesn't really look all that natural. So I started diving a little bit more into like, you know, flocking algorithms. And, and so that's kind of how I came up with the name Flappy Boyds, which is what I ended up naming this game. But basically the way that these flocking algorithms work is you have to look at every single bird and then look at the birds around those and kind of see what they're doing. And then, and then basically make some decisions about, you know, which direction you want to move in. So you're, you know, staying away from other birds that are close by, but still kind of moving towards a target direction. Now, unfortunately, it's not very easy for one bird to just look at the birds surrounding it you know oftentimes we have to check through many birds to see you know if this bird is close by and a really naive approach would be to have every bird check every single other bird and see if it's close by and if it needs to react to how that bird is oriented in the world and all that now this isn't really all too bad if we have you know like 10 or even 100 birds but when we have 10,000 birds now every bird checking every single other bird every single frame now we end up with what is the n squared problem. So we have 10,000 squared, which means that we're doing 100 million distance checks and other checks every single frame, which as you can probably guess, ends up being extremely expensive. So one thing that I implemented is something known as a quad tree. Now a quad tree, just to do a quick high level overview on this, it's basically a data structure where we can store birds in these little grid boxes and we can quickly and easily find birds that are in some of these surrounding boxes. And so rather than this being an n squared problem, this becomes an n log n problem. So break out the handy calculator once again, and you see that we're only doing 40,000 checks every frame, which is a lot more manageable for the computer to do. So anyways, once some of those technical challenges are out of the way, now it's back to the problem of how do I figure out the design challenges to make this a little bit more interesting. And that's where I said it comes back to the barcade. And I didn't actually notice this until like five minutes before recording this video. Go check out this observation that I had playing the barcade version of Flappy Bird.
See that right there? It starts off wide and then it gets narrower as it goes. So that's what I ended up implementing in this. Basically, when we start with 10,000 birds, the pipes are gonna be really wide from each other. And then as you start to you know, lose birds as you go through, the pipes get closer and closer. So it kind of gets a little bit more difficult over time. Scoring works pretty much the same way. Every time a bird crosses under one of the pipes, it's gonna go ahead and increment the score counter by one. And then basically you just keep going and going and going until you're out of birds. Now, of course, it's gonna be really difficult to control 10,000 birds at once. So basically I, again, kind of came up with a concept of a leader bird where you have this kind of like bigger blue bird that's kind of in the middle. And then all the birds are basically kind of flocking around that kind of main bird. Now, the thing that you need to watch out for here is if the main bird hits a pipe, you lose all your birds. So it can be kind of a fun challenge to see how low of a bird count that you can get before you know your main bird dies. Um, I actually have gotten it down to zero, so the main bird was the last one. But um, yeah, it's kind of a fun little thing. So anyways, check it out. Uh, links in the description below. By the way, I really would love to know what kinds of games do you want to see me remake on a you know very large entity scale. I think this is you know a totally fun exercise. I really want to do more and more of these. So anyways, with that, go download the game, enjoy it, have fun with it, and I'll see you in the next one.